Hi everyone, I'm Anoop Chandra from the Global Customer Support Team and in this presentation I will be explaining how we can use Power Center to read and write to a Kerberos enabled Hadoop cluster. So this will be my agenda for this presentation and uh, I will begin by introducing what HDFS is and what the power exchange connector uh, is capable of doing. Uh, next I will go through the steps that have to be performed uh, when we set up the power exchange connector followed by some uh, Kerberos specific configurations that have to be performed since we are uh, accessing a Kerberos enabled cluster. Moving on, I will give you a demonstration on the entire setup process that I just described. And last but not the least, I will uh, wrap up with some important points that you can keep in mind. So what is the Hadoop distributed file system? So HDFS is a distributed file system that is designed to run on commodity hardware and it is extremely fault tolerant and uh, provides high throughput access to application data. Now the power exchange for Hadoop connector enables us to either read data from HDFS or write data to HDFS uh, as well as uh, it enables us to write data to Hive tables. So the first step in setting up the connector would be to create a directory where the power center integration service runs. Uh, next we would copy the site XMLs from the Hadoop cluster that we are connecting to into this directory that we just created and the third step would be to go to the administrator console and uh, we would have to add the class path environment variable and uh, set it to the directory location that we just created. So the fourth step would be to restart the power center integration service so that the changes that we made take effect and um, then we would have to create the HDFS connection in the workflow manager and uh, select the HDFS file reader or file writer under uh, the workflow properties. So once uh, we have configured these properties, we would have to assign the HDFS connection that we just created to the source and target and run the workflow. And uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind is that the name node URI field that is in the Hadoop connection, right? So it is the value of the fs.default name property that can be found in the core site XML file. Moving on, um, since we are connecting to a Kerberos enabled cluster, it is mandatory that we perform the following steps. So the first step would be to run the knet command on the Informatica node where the integration service runs and generate the Kerberos ticket cache file. So the integration service you know does not take responsibility for um, generating or renewing the ticket cache and it must be done manually before we run the session. So once um, we have generated the ticket cache file, we would have to specify this location under um, a property within the core set XML file that is the Hadoop security Kerberos ticket cache path. So how it basically works is the integration service would use the class path uh, variable that we defined and it would find the site XMLs. Then it would uh, read the values of those properties and it would access uh, the Kerberos cluster. So next uh, I will give you a demonstration um, on the points that I just elaborated on so that you can get a clearer understanding um, on the setup process. So currently I am on the in Informatica server machine where the in integration service is running and um, I have created this uh, custom directory which is to hold the site XML files from the cluster and uh, I have already copied them. So once uh, this step is completed we will have to go to the admin console and uh, in the processes tab we would have to add the class path environment variable and set it to the directory location that um, we have uh, created and which holds the site xmls so like i said earlier this is for the integration service to know where um, these xmls are located so that it can connect to the hadoop cluster so once um, the environment variable has been set we would have to go to the workflow uh, manager and uh, create the Hadoop connection. So in this case I already have uh, like around 4 connections created and uh, this will be the connection that I will be using for the session and uh, in this case the mandatory fields would be the username and the HDFS connection URI and uh, in case we are looking to write to Hive uh, we would have to also mention the Hive driver name, the URL, uh, the username and followed by the password. And uh, in this case, the distribution that I'm using is uh, Cloudera CDH, but it can uh, change uh, depending upon your requirement. So once we have created the connection, we would have to go to the workflow properties 
and uh, in the mapping tab and sources section you would have to select the HDFS flat file reader instead of the uh, regular file reader and assign the Hadoop connection that we have created and uh, specify the file path and HDFS from where uh, we are reading data. So similarly for the uh, target we would have to specify the HDFS flat file writer assign the Hadoop connection and uh, we would have to mention the path on HDFS where we would like the target uh, data to be written and in this case you would also have to mention the reject uh, file path since it's uh, mandatory without which the session will fail. So once it's done we can go to our node and generate the Kerberos ticket cache. So in this case it's already been generated and uh, once this uh, cache file has been generated we would have to go to the core side xml file and uh, add the property which I described earlier. So in this case you can see that I have added the location here and uh, once it's been added we can uh, go to our uh, workflow manager and we can uh, run our workflow. So let me just go ahead and run this. As you can see it's completed successfully and um, in this case uh, since I'm uh, only writing to HDFS um, I have not added the values for the properties that I'm going to talk about. So here we can see that um, we, the generate and load hive table uh, property. So in case we want to write to hive so we would have to select this option and uh, specify the hive table name and in case it's externally managed we have to check this option as well. But in this example since I'm not using I've not um, checked it or specified the values for these properties. So uh, this brings us to the end of the demonstration. Alright, uh, let's keep some important points in mind before we wrap up this presentation. The first being um, if the integration service is not able to locate the Kerberos ticket cache then uh, you know the mapping would fail with a very generic uh, Java null pointer exception. But you know when we use external instrumentation to narrow down the issue we find that the cause is a GSS initiate error. And next is you know although PC supports reading and writing uh, to HDFS it does not support um, execution of uh, mappings in pushdown mode. So what pushdown mode is basically uh, we push the task of execution to the cluster and uh, so that you don't have to worry about you know burdening our Informatica machines. And next is uh, power center does not support uh, reading and writing to encrypted zones in HDFS. And uh, moving on. So when the target is configured as a hive table right, so the data would be first loaded into a flat file on HDFS and then uh, loaded onto the hive table and it's not loaded directly. But um, if we want to you know load it directly we would have, we would have to use the ODBC connector with power center. And um, you know once the ticket cache has been generated for a particular user. So we have to make sure that it has sufficient permissions uh, else the session would again fail with a GSS initiate error. And uh, in case we are looking to read uh, from hive tables um, we would have to use the ODBC connector um, with power center and uh, the power exchange for Hadoop connector does not support this feature. So uh, that's pretty much it and uh, thank you for your patience. So you can go to the below KBs uh, if you have uh, any doubts or if you need any detailed information. Um, and we would love to hear back from you. So if you have any feedback you can drop it on the channels that you see on screen. Uh, thank you and uh, have a great day.